Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on this channel and yes, the mic is here, the sound is better I hope, write it in the comments if not. And today we will have a look at the new improved directory structure of Nux4, why it is there, how to migrate over and can you keep the old one? All these answers right now, here we go. Yes, Nuxt4 is taking more and more shape and I hope you're not afraid of the migration because, well, I'm not, lots of people around me are not because it will just be a few tiny breaking changes, nothing as big as Nuxt2 to Nuxt3, so don't worry. And you can opt into them already as I've shown you in a video a few weeks ago, link as usual, you know, in the description, up there, there, you'll see it. Uh, and today we have a look at the new directory structure that Nuxt4 brings with it. So like, why is it there? Why did the Nux team decide to change things up? The benefits of it and whether you can keep the old one or not. And for this, we will just migrate the application from the last video about dynamic rendering, also there, link around, which was based on the Nuxt SPA uh, application from two weeks ago. And we'll see uh, how we go forward migrating to new directory structure. So let's jump into demo application and have a look. As usual, the demo application is, well, I would say pretty minimal, but there are a few things. We have our Nuxt config, then we have some things in server here, uh, as shown in the last video, and some uh, pages here. If you haven't watched the last video, not interested in dynamic rendering, don't worry, that's not a problem. This is just a very good example to see how we migrate things over. And we start with the most important thing. First, we want to check if we are in Nuxt 3.12 or higher. Um, well, so <laughs> Nux4 probably, but no, uh, 2.12 is required, otherwise you have to use the nightly mode and we can just use pnpmy Nux here to figure it out and it says Nux 3.12, so we're good. Now, we can start the server as usual, pnpm dev or whatever package manager you use, and it will just start 3.12. So now we want to opt into the changes as I've shown you a couple of weeks ago by basically saying, okay, we set the future uh, object in here, we want to set a flag, which is the compatibility version. We set that to four as an integer or as a number. And then here we also have the validation of that running with compatibility version four. And now we can opt into the new directory structure. But you see, well, or you don't see, right? There's, there's no arrows throwing around saying, hey, you're doing things wrong. There's a new structure. Well, mainly because we make sure that you can keep your old projects without straight away migrating. You don't have to adapt to the new structure. So if we see, okay, we have, like we did here, uh, a top level pages folder. That's not a problem if we just uh, fall back to the old structure. But of course we want to migrate and see what the new structure brings us. So let's do that. The first thing we want to do is we want to create a new folder called app. So all our NUC specific things, they will live in this app folder here which means components, which we don't have here, but also the pages folder that will live in the app. So now we have an app, pages, and then users, for example, and so on, so on. And technically, if you have a components folder that would also live in here, components, and we have another component, say my component.view, that will be exactly in here too. Uh, and same for all the other things, right? Like middleware, layouts, and so on, and so on. And if you'd have an app.view, that would also live in the app folder. So this might be a bit strange, like app slash app.view, but well, naming things is hard and there was a whole RFC to think about uh, a better or more suitable name, but eventually we, we all can do that. Maybe let's, let's have a look at the RFC real quick, uh, created by Sebastian already in March, uh, discussing about some options. And there were quite a few comments around that with like some naming, some suggestions, but yeah, eventually, uh, we also internally thought about like UI, web, front end, view, but it's really tricky because we don't want to say, okay, this is only the, the front end part because it's also not really true. So it's more like we could also say Nux the Nitro, but that also feels too, well, too much naming in the end. So I think app was uh, the, the best name of, of these there, which is also why we decided for that. But if you want to give it another name, that's uh, actually also possible. It's uh, fully customizable to change that. So um, you know what? Why not doing that right away? So if you say, okay, app is not a nice name for the whole thing, well, then you want to name it, I don't know, uh, my fancy uh, app instead. Yeah, I know, naming things and so on. Then you can do this, just name it my fancy app. And then in your Nux config, you decide in here, we have a, uh, a source tier option. Uh, and that's basically pointing to the right folder. So we just say my fancy app 
and we save the whole thing, uh, wait until Nuxt is restarted, and then we can check if our application is still up and running. We quickly refresh in the browser and we will see, yes, it is still here. It's still working as expected. So once again, I always recommend to stick with the recommendations unless you have a good reason not to. But for example, if you say, yeah, okay, um, maybe there's a better way, better naming. You have some internal structures you don't want to change. Then you can go for it. Once again, we, we are really all up to the freedom of choice while giving really good defaults. So, okay, now we have that app folder, um, or in this case, my fancy app. Uh, the question is, what might not belong into that? Uh, and are there any other folders to consider? Let's check. So there are actually a few things to, to consider here, because first, the server folder, I, I never moved out, because that's one of the big things when it comes to the new structure. We have our Nuxt and more front-oriented part, and then our server part, which consists your API routes, server routes, Nitro middleware, for example, Nitro plugins, and so on, so on. And the idea is to have them in two separate folders because, oh, well, there's a bunch of reasons. First, it is really nice to separate the actual front-end part from the, the server part, as in types, global available things. So we can also give you an easier guidance when you maybe accidentally import things from the server that you, well, better shouldn't or say like, oh, all these composables might not be available on the server because you shouldn't use view composables on the server side. That's also what I've shown you in the Nuxt versus Nitro video linked, you know where. Uh, but it's very important. And of course, this was always a little bit, a little area of friction by people not 100% understanding which part is which, like the server part, but also server rendering, which happens in the front end part. It's all explained in the video. And with the directory structure, it should also be easier. And there's another thing, which is performance because if you watch a folder, let's say the whole project route, then you have to watch all the single files of all the nested folders. So your whole .git folder, I hope you use git, right? And the node modules as well. So while on, on Linux and Mac, this commonly works pretty well. On Windows, this, well, didn't, didn't go that great. Um, and there were some severe performance issues during dev, not during like production and build, because file watch is only there during dev. But if you don't have a nice dev experience, yeah, your daily work uh, will result in pain and we don't want that. So that's why we suggest to, to change that. And we have one folder usually called app uh, and one folder called server and they're separate, but there's more. As I mentioned, there are top level folders that will stay. So one of them is for example, public. So if, if we had a public.test.txt and just write my, write my test, okay, why not? Um, in here, then the public folder, as it has been before with Nuxt, it will just stay straight away it mapped to the domain root. So if you just write uh, localhost 3000 slash test.txt in the browser here, we see, okay, write my test. Here we go, it's, it's existing. So the public folder, because it is, well, not really belonging to the Nuxt part, not the Nitro part, so not the server nor the front end ish part. Well, it makes sense to stay on, on top, right? Uh, and also, nobody stops you from creating more folders on tops or put, for example, your types also on tops that apply to both the server and uh, the, the front end part of the app part. So you're also free to create folders wherever you want uh, to have them. But there's more. So there's there one more folder for sure that some of you maybe know already, um, which is the modules folder. So what Nuxt is doing, it can automatically register modules in a modules folder that also works in Nuxt 3 right now without any compatibility flag. Uh, and that folder, because it's also can be rated to both, right? You can add server middleware like Nitro things in the module, also Nuxt things. It's also um, on top, so top level. And there's there's one more folder. That's a new one, um, only possible with Nuxt 4. The compatibility flag is shown, uh, which is the layers folder. So layers, you might have heard of them. If not, then uh, please, well, have a look at uh, my layers beginner guide. Uh, also a video recorded quite recently where I show you why it's useful. Um, and the idea is more or less to uh, extract parts of application into own mini applications or the other way around, right? Like uh, have a base application and then build applications on top to white label them uh, or to, to have different designs and so on, so on. Lots of use cases, also great for domain driven design. Um, that's all possible now from a simple layers folder as a start. So let's have a look how that exactly works. In the application here, we can just create a layers folder and in there, we can, for example, create my awesome layer. Uh, and let's say, okay, what we want to add here? Well, we want to add a nuxconfig.ts maybe. Um, we say export default 
uh, define Nux config, not Nux component, but Nux config. And let's add another folder components slash um, layer component, uh, that view here, right? And we write it in here and say h1 hey from layer. So we save the whole thing. And now what we want to do, of course, is we want to use this component from the layers, my awesome layer component in our application. So how we do that? Well, once again, we can now go to my fancy app pages index view, for example. And then in here, we use the layer component. So let's save the whole thing and take a look how things work. And as soon as we refresh the page or start again, we say this, hey, from layer. And of course, now we can also start overriding these layer components in, in our main application and so on and so on. But adding these layers, you don't even need an entry in the next config.ts can be really, really convenient. And if you wondered like, oh, why is there a component in layer? That doesn't make much sense. Check out the video. Um, really, really worth having a look into because layers is one of the features that I don't think any other meta framework out there has in that way. And it makes domain driven design or slicing up your big monolith really, really easy. Okay, and there's one more thing to do. Yeah, one more thing, which is having a look on the official upgrade guide for Next4, where also the directory structure is mentioned and to see what else is in there. And of course, the link for this and all of that is in the description as usual. And here we have the migrating to Next4 and the first one is the new directory structure as uh, the impact level is significant. Even though you don't have to use it, it's recommended. It's really worth it. The RFC link is uh, what we've seen before. So Sebastian's uh, post back then. And it's basically what we've just discussed. The source directory, which you could have already set in Next3 actually, is now called app. You can call it source if you want to, or what as we did with my fancy app, right? Uh, modules and public are in the root directory. The root directory is also a thing already, right? And then we have this uh, app folder. Very interestingly, now you might wonder, yeah, okay, but the app folder, maybe I already have an app folder in, in, in my Nuxt application. Um, how does that relate to, to the new app folder? Is it the same? How does it work? So let's have a, a little example there. And as an easy example, I just used the website that I built myself. It's also fully open source. Um, and there I have an app folder, but that's not related to the new app uh, source directory because, well, seven months ago, that wasn't really a thing. Uh, so let's have a look because commonly in the app folder, you either have your uh, router options TS or an SPA loading template. And well, these are commonly either to change as the, the file name says, the router options of your router, like scroll behavior, or maybe adding custom routes, define things for subdomains and so on and so on. So that's what the router options TS is commonly used for if you have any. And the SPA loading template, if you build an SPA uh, and want a different loading spinner while it's loading. That's also maybe something for another video noting that down. Um, nevertheless, these uh, two files, the router option TS or the SPA loading template, they're also mentioned in the upgrade guide. And commonly is the directory uh, than the source directory. So you just put it in app. If it's still in there, just leave it in there, which we also can see here where we have the router options TS right next to the app.view and all the other folders. But if you want to and change that, you can also use a new app option in the nux.config and say, okay, I want it under, I don't know, app options or app extras or however you prefer that, that makes more sense. So to configure that, you can also simply go in your nux config, right? Like jumping in here and say, okay, we have a dir for directories. Uh, and then we say app, and then we can rename it to something or like extra is a bit better or uh, whatever you really prefer. I think co-locating these files uh, with um, the app.view and uh, all the other folders, that kind of makes sense. There are also not too many, so it shouldn't be too cluttered either. Um, but I think that's also one important thing to mention. And if you're not using auto imports right now in your Nuxt application, but you use aliases like the tilde alias or, or the at, then you might have to change these aliases now when you import things, mainly because before you might have pointed things to uh, the source directory with just one tilde and now source directory and root directory are not the same anymore. Before the double tilde or double add and the single tilde or single add, they were all pointing to the same thing, to your project root. But now they point, well, the double one still to a project root and the single one to your app folder or however you name it. Which means you might have to rename things. If you, for example, import uh, a type from a top level folder, you might have to use the double tilde or double add alias. But 
I think that's the biggest caveat and you will definitely notice it because either your IDE or your type checks or you just your app will scream at you saying, hey, I can't find that file. What's, uh, what's wrong during build? So you definitely won't miss that. And besides that, I really think that's it. That's all about the new improved directory structure. As I mentioned before, you don't have to opt in straight away, but I would highly recommend you to do so, mainly to get the sweet performance gains during dev mode, the IDE type safety and also for type checks. And well, that's just the start, right? Like with this split up structure, we maybe do a few more things here and there, but as mentioned, you can do it whenever you feel like, you can rename things as you want. And there's even a bigger migration guide uh, in the upgrade guide on nux.com showing you exactly, okay, take your assets, components, composables, move them all into the app folder, basically as we did in the video, just with the exhaustive list of things, right? So let me know, what do you think about the new directory structure? Is it good? Do you like it better than before? Better name for app? Bring them all in. I'm curious to read them and we'll answer all, to the, uh, all of them. As well, don't forget to check out the newest Deja View episode because we have the one and only Daniel Rowe with us talking about Nuxt 4, uh, the changes there, uh, how, how he came to be the, the team lead of Nuxt as well, and many, many more things. Definitely check it out. Also check out the other videos before, as I mentioned, the links everywhere, and stay tuned for next week because, well, there's another video coming, it will be amazing. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, let me know what you're missing or what you wanna know and stay tuned, happy hacking.